Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we have a very special Lagavulin, Dustin. Mm -hmm. We have the 2019 Jazz Fest 21-year-old Lagavulin, one of only three 21-year-old whiskeys they've ever released, along with the 2012 and the 2007, I believe. Um, so a very rare occasion, the Lagavulin will offer a 21-year-old whiskey. comes in this beautiful... I was gonna say, Mike, they finally box. stopped putting them in burlap saps or, or sacks, or worse yet, giving you a stupid like gift shop bag that then you feel obligated to keep. Yeah, it feels like a farmhouse. But anyway, this particular Lagavulin 21, again, 2019, comes in at 50.9% ABV. And Dustin, very rare bottle. Yeah, they just stole from McAllen on that one. Yes, they did. <laughs> um, very rare bottle where they only have 2004 bottles made, just like the 22 year old. That's a low, low yeah. count. I got two, so. 2002 left forever for the rest of the world but this one is unlike the other two 21 year olds this is bourbon cask only yep so a little bit different than the other two 21 year olds and i'll try to bring you all three of the 21 year old lag of wounds i have the 2012 the 1991 vintage still trying to procure the 1985 but uh we will bring that to you at some point when i get my hands on it but for today since it's summertime here in Columbus, we figure a nice ex-bourbon Lagavulin 21. We've been loving the ex-bourbons lately, Mike. Yeah. It's, it's good when it's high yeah. outside. We've really, I mean, we've, we've kind of been talking about this today, but we keep really enjoying these highly peated whiskeys and bourbon casks. They really kind of bring out the fruity notes we like. Mm -hmm. So I will say this, Dustin, of the three 21-year-old Lagavulins, um, they keep getting less regarded as they go along. So the 1985 was obviously the gold standard. Um, then the 1991, um, I, you've, you know, you've had mine. It's pretty good whiskey. Uh, we'll bring that to you guys here shortly. <laughs> pretty very, good. very good whiskey. And uh, this one here, I believe, is a 1997 or 98 vintage. Uh, but again, all bourbon cast maturation, very light whiskey. When Lagavulin comes out with any special whiskey, you know, I try to get my hands on it. You do, and I don't think you've missed any uh, in the last uh, few years. Still looking for that 85.21 and a 37 at a reasonable price. So if anyone Since the knows, last few years. True. Yeah, I've been killing it lately. All right, so uh, let's get into this. Dustin, what do you think as far as the nose? It is incredibly medicinal, almost antiseptic soap. Clean in a way that I don't know that I really like. I mean, this is almost like they have, I mean, it's not bleach, but I mean, it's like they've just, they've done something here and they've really kind of cleaned out everything. And yeah, there's some oak. There's smoke, there's some iodine. Again, I'm kind of going back to antiseptic. I'm not getting a lot of the Lagavulin sweet, rich malt yet. It, I mean, there's, it's there, but it's Give it a second. far back. Um, yeah, it's a different Lagavulin, for sure. Very clean, very clean 21-year-old. Again, it reminds me in a lot of ways of the better 12-year-old Lagavulins, being that it's only bourbon cast maturation. But aside from that, I am picking up more fruitiness than you are initially. I'm getting some lime in this, and I'm also getting some light peach in it as well. But yes, it is very medicinal, very lagavulin smoke, very bonfire smoke, and there's no sherry cast maturation to cover it up whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, there is some fruit, there is some malt here, but it's... It's sweetened it up. It's now. so far back in there, and you're right, it is opening up, but I mean, we'll, 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 the bottle's down here, we're yeah, getting no. close to the halfway mark. Yeah, no, I, I've been drinking on this for a while, so I'm, I'm about right here on it, so not quite halfway, but I've had this bottle open for... I don't know, how long when did I get this? It was, it was last year when I've had it for... Was it really last year? Okay, it's been probably six to seven months. It was into last year. It yeah, was. Yeah, and I opened it up right away for the most part. Well, actually, I got one, and then when I got the second one, I opened it this right away. So maybe this has only been open five or six months. Yeah. I've only had this maybe once with you, so I know it maybe twice. Maybe twice. I can't remember, because you got the 22 and the 21 together, and I know I've had one of those more than the other. Definitely had the 22 more than this one. It also comes in a kind of a goofy, weird label which i haven't seen before you know i remember when um a buddy of ours mario went over to jazz fest in 2019 this wasn't very highly regarded and i get it you know it was an expensive bottle 500 mm -hmm. pounds or something like that yeah then you're not getting wild lag of one you know what i'm saying yeah, I mean, you know i gotta say i mean i think my initial like notes on the nose are somewhat kind of negative sounding sure. i don't want to say that this is actually a bad nose or uninviting i actually excited to go in and drink it it's just it's not that aristocratic malt that we always talk about. The I fruits, agree. they're there, but they're so far back. It is 
jarring, it's surprising. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we compare this to other 20 something year old Isla whiskeys, it's much less sweet. Whereas I generally consider Lagavulin to be the sweeter, on the sweeter side of Isla. Of Isla. I agree. Southern Isla especially. Mm -hmm. It's it's more sweet and it's more meaty, and I'm not getting either here like I expect. Uh, it's still there, but you're right. It, it's toned down to some degree. That's what the age kind of did to this one. It kind of it mellowed out some of those notes. Um, I always liken this, like I said, to a, a, a really good version of the 12-year-old. Yeah. And, but uh, kind of like Ardbeg. You know, Ardbeg 10 compared to the new Ardbeg 19s. It's not the jump that you would expect it's for yeah. that price difference and age difference. Well, you know what also I'm just thinking here in my head, Mike? These casks weren't ready. Lagavulin said, hey, we need a special release. We got some 21-year-old barrels. Let's go ahead and pour them out. Let's bottle them. And I'm thinking this should have gone another five years. Well, I think it could have gone longer because I don't think you're getting up any like bitter oak tannins from the cask. I don't, I don't think, not thinking of any of that here right now, but I will say this. I have had more flavorful wood experience from say like the 2017 Lagavulin 12. Well, but I think what I guess I'm getting at is and it's only 50.9, but I'm getting a lot of alcohol still on the nose here. So you, you, you liken that to a tired cask, I'm guessing? A tired cask and or I just, I'm thinking I need, uh, this might actually be better at lower proof had it just mellowed a little longer. <clears throat> Some people think that about Lagavulin, you know? I mean, I've always said like even at 43%, like the 16, it smells incredible compared mm -hmm. to some of the cast strength Lagavulins that have had the 18s, the 16s, you know, the 22s. They don't come off as um, pungent as a 43%er yeah. does. So again, with Lagavulin, as I mentioned before, it's, it's like a, like a snake. It's got to take a long, a big snake, long time to uncoil. Yeah. Python, boa constrictor. Yeah. Well, and you know what, Mike? It's getting sweeter as we continue to mm -hmm. nose it. And you know, it just dawned on me. My favorite Lagavulins have been the ones that were older and pushing 60%. So maybe the opposite's the case here and the sweetness has left it. And the alcohol is here because sweetness actually correlates with higher proof in Lagavulins uh, distillate. Possibly. It, it, it passes my smell test. All right, I'm going for a sip. Go for it, man. Yeah, I mean, now that I'm starting to get in here, the medicinal notes of the smoke starting to come out a little bit more with some of that loggable and meatiness. There is sort of that peach that Mike was talking about starting to come in. More like a white peach, though, not like mm -hmm. a really fruity, juicy nope. uh, peach. Dry peach. Dried white, yeah. So, Mike, what are you getting on the palate? More fruits on the palate for sure. It's smoky, big smoky. I'm getting distinct lime. Comes off very lime to me. On top of that, I get a big wall of vanilla. That peach kind of comes at the end, but it's almost stinging the alcohol initially when, when you when it first hit your tongue. It's aggressive. Yeah, it is hot. It's aggressive. It's not spicy per se, but it's tingly. Yeah, tingly. Uh, good oak notes. Really good richness. I'm not getting distinct fruits here. Like I'm start, I'm getting like a softer, sweeter citrus thing. You could you want to call that peach. I don't get a sharp citrus like you would a lemon or a lime that you're talking about, Mike. Mm, right. I'm definitely getting some wood smoke. Some, mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of um, a lot of like a powdered sugar, candy cigarette kind of notes mixed in with that kind of sweet, heavy Lagavulin malty just goodness. And even I'm getting a little bit of an actual kind of like I would get on like a Brook Lottie Port Charlotte or something where I'm getting a little bit of actually like more like natural barley note. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I would say you, you, this one you do pick up the actual grain in this more than you would in a normal Lagavulin. And I don't usually get that in Lagavulin, especially 20-something year olds. But yeah, I'm getting a nice kind of barley note, which I'm actually really digging that aspect of the whiskey. Yeah, it feels like it's stripped bare. So it feels like Lagavulin just with the with the curtain pulled back. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, it's like if Lagavulin was Wizard of Oz, it was that part in the movie where they pulled back the curtain and they saw us. They saw yeah, us. this is not sophisticated like you'd expect at 20 years, but it's... It's, there's no youth notes like, for example, we've talked about the 2019 12 year where you're starting mm -hmm. to get some still off the still notes, which we absolutely Hated. loathe yeah. in a 12 year old whiskey. It says none of that, but it is still, it's punchy, it's aggressive both on alcohol and peat. Mm -hmm. Definitely makes me think more of like a 14, 15 year old, well proofed, just really good everyday whiskey. Yeah, I'm definitely not getting 
seven hundred dollar whiskey here. No, which is you know I, I got a couple, but that I mean that's what this bottle costs. This is coming off to me like a Gordon and McPhail Kalila cast strength. Um, Fifteen year old yeah, Kalila or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I mean, really, really good whiskey. One hundred and fifty bucks all day, and I'm super excited about it. And I want to sit back and. Oh, it was not that, my friend. I know. This is a drinking whiskey, not a sipping whiskey. I guess it's kind of where I'm getting at. It's like, it's that really good premium whiskey you have when you want to have three glasses and you want the same thing all night. You just want to sit back, maybe smoke a cigar, sit out by the campfire, and just have a really assertive whiskey. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an aggressive whiskey, but I will say this, and this is what disappoints me about both this and the 22, which we'll do here soon. It's, it's not a memorable whiskey like with normally with older lag and bones. So like the 2000, 1991, 21-year-old man, that, that, I know that whiskey, mm -hmm. it's an epic whiskey. I can talk about the Sherry Nose, the 25, the 24. Those are whiskeys that leave an impression on you that you won't soon forget. And if someone says, well, why do you like this whiskey? We're like, A, B, and C. You know what I mean? This whiskey is not that. It's not as memorable as the 16-year-old, the standard. It's not as memorable as the new Nick Offerman um, Guinness cask, 11-year. You, know, you got to dig deep with this whiskey to appreciate it. Now, that said, I'm not saying this isn't a better whiskey than those two. It's not memorable. And, but I will say with cast drink Lagavulins, that's generally the case. If it's not a, sh a heavily sherry cast Lagavulin. Because you know I have like all three of the 18s. Yeah. We've had a couple of NASs that I that did jump out at me as being pretty special. Sure. But I think they I mean, probably have a little sherry. Team exclusive. Yeah, I mean, those, those had sherry in them. Um, and I even like the Distillery Team exclusive from 2017, which that did have sherry, but the 18 did not, and we kind of liked the 18 Distillery Team exclusive pretty well. Yeah. Yeah, no, this doesn't, if you would have told me Lagavulin and 21 years old, $750 whiskey, I'd have said pass. Yeah, I, I bought two before I ever mm -hmm. tried it, and I, I, I'm a Lagavulin fan, I'll buy Lagavulins, it's not that, but for what this is, this is definitely not a $700 or even a $500 or $400 bottle of whiskey, in my opinion. This is shockingly punchy and salty compared yeah. to a lot of the, like for 21 years, and compared, again, Lagavulin one has never been the saltiest. It's a meaty, beefy, oily, oily whiskey. But it's, it's all those things. And it is, but it's never been this salty and just assertive. And again, the proof on this is actually on the lower end. Mm -hmm. So Mike, I'm an 87. Dead, dead right there. I was going back towards you in 86 and 87. Yeah. And again, I try to take my love of Lagavulin and how much I paid for it out of the equation. Yeah. Sounds like it's at 86, is it 87? I was going to say 87, but I assume you'd be at an 86. So makes me feel <laughs> bad. Makes me feel a little bit better, at least that you're at an 87 out of 100. But I was, I was, I was, I was debating going lower, and here's why I did it. A couple days ago, I had the Batch 12 Lafroy 10 year cast drink, mm -hmm. which I think is actually a pretty good Lafroy 10 cast drink. Mm -hmm. I think it's one of the better ones they've had in the last couple of years. I agree. Um, Really rich, 60%, but the youth, the funk, there, there's issues. Mm -hmm. This is just as assertive, even though it's 10% less. Yes. Just as aggressive, but this doesn't have any of those youth notes. It yeah, is a yeah. better put together whiskey. Agreed. And that's a whiskey I would have probably given an 84, 85 was the Lafroy. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this is significantly better. Cause, because there isn't really anything yeah. off putting. And you know, the thing is, I, if I came into this thinking about how expensive this was and it being a 21 year old whiskey, oh, disaster. I probably would be like, Trying to get my not talk myself out of an eighty three, but yeah, the whiskey. I, 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 I knew what this cost. I knew what it was, but I kind of I made sure I took that out of my head before we got into it. Oh, buddy, this is a whiskey disappointment. Yeah, as far as what I paid for. It. Oh, it's a about massive failure. Massive failure. Massive failure for, for the price. Is. You know, I mean, I think a fair price on this is about two hundred. Yeah, two hundred. Two twenty. Because it's just so intense. It's so powerful. It's so pungent. And you could put a ton of you could probably proof this down to forty percent, Mike, and actually still have a really enjoyable glass of whiskey. But but buddy, it's rare. Yep. It's laggable. And they don't rarely come or usually come out with a twenty one year old whiskey. Only two thousand four bottles of it made. But you're right. This is an epic whiskey. And it's the fanciest box I think they've done. School box. At least in a while. School box. I'll give them that. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if they got some old ones from back in the day, but it's the best box you have. Yeah, and I got the 25, 24, maybe drag it's like one kind of is. I like that box better than the 25. I agree. So, yeah. It seemed old Diageo box. Anyway, those are all thoughts. Dustin and I are both in 87. We've agreed a few times today. Yeah. We're, we're right there palette-wise apparently today. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm glad you, I'm actually glad you thought enough of that because I assumed you'd be at 86 or 85. You know, I, the thing is there's not an off note on here. Agreed. And that's what- It's old whiskey. So for me, when you don't have off notes, I, 85 to me means there's something that's just not there that I need it to be there. 
This is just not old whiskey tasting, but it's not young whiskey. No, it's weird in between. Yeah. Nice, it's well done, but it's it's lacking everything I want in a Lagavulin. It's just not exciting. I my, Again, my expectation for Lagavulin, 20 or 21 year old Lagavulin, is hot. I mean, again, the 85 and the 91 Lagavulin 21s are epic. 93, 94 whiskeys. Maybe 95s of that 85. Yeah. Epic whiskeys. This, I expect an epic. It's not epic. No. It's not, it's not cheap. It's not, it's not special. No. That's, that's the real problem. This is very good peated whiskey. I don't mind paying a lot of money for a special whiskey. Yeah. I just want a special whiskey when I pay a premium price for it. Yeah. I've got 30 bottles at home that I would, I mean, just clearly are better and I paid less for every one of them. I have 10 lag of ones that are better whiskeys than this. Yeah. You might have some 12s that are better. Maybe the 17. We might have to go back in time and uh, check out a few of those. We might do that comparison. We'll see. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section. Again, Dustin and I are both in 87 out of 100 on this one. Bit of a disappointment for me and Lagavulin one being my favorite distillery, but you have those sometimes. Yep. Take the good with the bad and you just keep on rolling. Dustin, what do you wish the folks till next time? Happy drinking. We'll see you then.